You know, it's been a while since I've covered a plant I actually, genuinely despise. A plant that makes me upset to see it fundamentally just simply exist, and I feel the need to complain about it. Hard. So this is why we're talking about today's plant. Blover. I really hate this thing. It is a plant that has annoyed me to no end, as it's just so awful. I seriously do not think there is a worse plant than Blover. Though that may be because the rice is so bad, they can't even be considered a plant, but hey, that's the story for later. I think it is the exact example of what a PVZ plant shouldn't be. In fact, Blover is so bad that I consider it an insult to me, personally. No, I am not overreacting. Blover shouldn't be in PZ2. That's an indisputable damn fact. It was banned PZ1 and had no reason to return. And I am willing to back up my words here. I'm not just talking big here. I plan to show you big and jam it down your bloody throat. Blover is among the worst kinds of plan PZ2. And you better believe it by the time I'm done here. Yes, that's a threat. So, let's start it by covering the wide and, clearly, deep history of Blover through the ages. What it actually is, and other key information about Blover that you need to know before we get into anything else. Get your books out, this will be very important to keep in mind for the rest of this video. Blover is a clover that spins really fast and blows zombies away. I have no clue why. Clovers don't really have any associations with wind or heavy wind from my admittedly brief amount of research into it. Then again, most plants don't really have an association with anything. Either way, his visual design is fairly strong. Though it is literally just a three-pronged fan most of the time. Though don't get me wrong, this symbol design hides some unique traits. Either way, Blover was first added into the first game as a filler plant. You see, PVC1 had plants unlocked after every level, so a few of these had to be pointless, useless, specific, or otherwise overall filler. Blover was one of them, existing solely to counter two things total. Both of them being covered by other plants, but well, roll compression I guess. Blover removes fog, a gimmick in the similarly named fog levels. A true shocker to all, I imagine. Either way, it'll blow the fog away for a while when placed, allowing a player to do whatever they want with full visibility. Pretty handy overall, though Plant Turn also can remove the fog in that game, acting as a more permanent solution. You can also sometimes just see through the fog, so that's a thing as well. The other thing Blubber does is blow away the balloon zombies. These are zombies unkillable by most plants, and this will remove all of them instantly on screen when placed. They are also counterable by Cactus, but unlike Cactus, it will remove them entirely. But yeah, Cactus already counters them. This is just how PvD1 is sometimes. There are a ton of plants like this. Mostly in Fog, funnily enough. Just general plants that are filler and only interact with specific stuff. It's kinda sad, actually. Anyways, after PvD1, they decide to bring back Blover. For some reason? I don't actually know. Maybe they felt that Far Future had literally no PvZ1 plans and that was a problem, somehow? Like, Far Future was already mostly made by the time the game originally released, and the other early worlds had a huge amount of plans from the original game, so... Maybe? Regardless, when making Far Future, they decided the one plan they were missing was Blover. So it now exists. Great. It's now got a few more uses than before, though, thankfully to some extent. This is mostly because there are way more flying zombies, though these zombies are always hittable now, so Blover is less useful overall. Now this is where I need to separate Blover into two. Blover and Blover Prime. Now I know what you're thinking. Creeps, why are you naming them stupidly and pretending to be smart? And my answer is shut up. Anyways, Blover Prime is separate because Blover has a very huge mechanical change that now redefines the whole plant. To the point that it's just easier to separate them in this way. If you know what's coming, this will make sense. They added a new mechanic to Blover, where any and all airborne zombie will be killed immediately. And by airborne, I mean in the air at all. If a zombie dares jump, 
you bet that Blover will be able to murder it. Violently. This includes zombies like Prospectors, which will be sent off a field at high speed, and Bottle Mips. Genuinely, if it's in the air for any amount of time at all, it'll be murdered brutally. Now, the issue? Well, this includes Knockback. Any zombie that is knocked back can be instantly killed. And this, well, this is what I will call Blover Prime. Though this isn't as global as I make it out to be, some plants are specifically coded to not allow this. This includes Spring Green Plant Food, which grants immunity to Blover for the duration. This also includes Boing Setter and Levitator, who protect zombies from Blover. These are all necessary for arena balancing, and making Levitator an actually interesting plant, though I should know that originally Spring Green Plant Food did actually work. It was removed later, again for arena. Either way, for the rest of this video, I'll be treating Blover and Blover Prime as separate plants. These plants have very different traits, and in the manner of this video, both of them are bad in their own way. Speaking of which, we should get to talking about why I don't like Blover. I've been looking forward to this for a while, so please, let me indulge myself. Blover in PvZ1 is one of the key examples of lock and key design. Essentially, you see the lock, in this case being a fog of balloon zombie, and use this plan to directly counter, without much more strategy being involved. I've covered this more in an earlier video, so I won't repeat myself, but I will say that in PvZ2, this was mostly removed, with most plans that once acted this way now being attached to mechanics with alternatives. Greybuster and Blover are the big two for sure. The issue is that this doesn't really change how these plants work. There is very rarely a decision being made when you are bringing Blover into a level. If you see a decent amount of dangerous flying zombies, you bring it. If you don't, you don't bring it. Very flat. It's also far less useful now, as most flying zombies are very weak. In all honesty, the only three dangerous flying zombies are Bug Buckets, Balloons, and Blastronaut and one of them won't appear outside of extra levels anyways. The other flying zombies are things like Seagull and Bug Basics, which aren't dangerous at all. Either way, using Blover is entirely strategyless. When you use Blover, you place it down, and you kill everything on screen that it can kill. There is nothing else it can do. There is no more strategy involved in using this plant. It will work. There is no chance it will fail. Positioning isn't important due to its range, and the ability will trigger almost immediately after planting. It also only costs 50 sun and has 5 seconds recharge, so neither is a real issue that could possibly make this plant more complex or interesting to use. The closest thing is that it technically has some timing involved with certain zombies, such as Prospector, Bottom Mimp, and otherwise. The issue is that this doesn't really change much, because it's the same timing each time and these are often huge windows. Blover starts blowing very quickly after placement, so it doesn't really matter much. And it only needs to blow at some point while the enemy is airborne. There is timing involved, but it's incredibly simple, especially if you are prepared for it. If the timing is stricter, then you basically need to have Blover prepared before they show up, which does make the timing harder, but come on. Now, this is broadly where I'd end this video, if Blover Prime didn't exist. Blover Prime has an entirely different set of issues as these, bar one, the simplicity of use. Blover Prime is not hard to use in any true capacity. With that in mind, let's keep it going and cover it too. Blover Prime's main issue is that what it kills is instantaneous, and for Blover Prime, every zombie is equal. It is not harder to knock back a buckethead as it is a half-dead imp. They are all equal, with the sole exception of the lucky few immune to knockback. Not Bully, as Bully itself is actually only immune to Primal Pea Shooter and Double Weak Knockback, but boss enemies. Yeah, I don't know why Bully can be knocked back either. It's fairly dumb, but whatever. Pain is pain. Anyways, the fact that what a zombie is doesn't matter to Blover Prime means that Blover Prime actively negates level design, as opposed to play against it. It doesn't matter if you spawn 5 buckets, 5 gargantuas, 5 imps, or whatever, Blover Prime will always act the same against it. 
and the main knockback options that work with it are AoE too. Think Chard or Holy Barrier, which just make this even more extreme. And the timing is really not hard to get down. Once you learn it, it will be the same no matter what. Negating level design just makes a plan that will always play the same. Very few zombies will change the status quo. It's just not a compelling design. I would honestly argue that Blood of Prime makes levels less interesting as a result, as it becomes a level. It's just not very compelling. And don't get me started on Level Stalia. If you didn't know, Level Stalia has a unique trait it gains. At level 5, it gains a super minor upgrade. Barely noticeable. What is it? Well, it can now knock back all zombies as stalls. Buy one tile. And this is a free plant which, at this point, has 18 seconds recharge. Now, you know what video you clicked on, you know why this is being brought up, and is a very real problem. If you haven't clicked, with Blover Prime, this becomes an 18 seconds cooldown, a better cherry bomb that ignores enemy stats entirely. It is exceedingly dumb, and I am shocked it is allowed and not removed like Spring Bean Plant Food. Anyways, there's a trade I should probably bring up. It's not super important, but uh, I mean it makes sense to have its own section because how weird it is to plant. So, uh, yeah. Did you know Dandelion has a synergy with Blover? Dandelion is an incredibly met plant. Its damage output is fairly weak for a 275 cost plant, having less than repeater, and having a hard time focusing down threats when it starts to spread out across lanes. Its damage is entirely splash, but it's a 1x1 splash not particularly great. Now this does actually add more damage overall, but it being split among 3 lanes, that was a lot. In total, 600 damage of seeds are spread, but they are spread evenly among 3 lanes, resulting in 200 damage per lane, or enough to kill a basic. And unlike normal fire, these can't concentrate, so you are likely going to be wasting some of these shots on enemies that are already dead functionally. On Unpawned, and you are overall unable to kill even a Conad this way. It's just not fantastic. This is also the only remotely tactical aspect of Blover, but it just doesn't work. If Dandelion focused its lane, I would much prefer it, but it doesn't. It's a scattershot of damage, with no focus, and that will not help individual lanes recover, which is where the biggest threats tend to be. It is very unfortunate, but it is definitely an improvement on Blover for sure. I won't go too in depth with this, Consider this just me acknowledging that the synergy exists, and that it's much weaker than it seems, because that's really what this section is. You shouldn't run Blover specifically for this. It won't hurt if you have any running Dandelion anyways, but its poor damage means you probably shouldn't be using Dandelion anyways, unless you really feel like it, which is fair. It's also important to note that this is not the only plant which has a second Dandelion. One of them is Draftadil, which will automatically blow the leaves off, which is honestly fun, but the other is more relevant here. It's a plant that probably should have been brought up a while back. Introducing Hurricane. So why listen to the issues of Blover before? And if funny thing is, that PopCap seems to have agreed, because they made a version that straight up fixed most of these issues, which is a rarity for sure. This is of course in Hurricane, which does everything Blover does wrong, pretty well. Let's start with the first crucial change, being that it can now only kill flying zombies, not zombies that jump. A huge nerf from Blover, sure, but this helps make Hurricane Prime not a thing, while making logical sense that a huge blow would push some zombies back off the screen. However, this is where the second key part of Blover's design gets changed and improved on. Range. Blover has full board range, while Hurricane only has range in its lane. This is a huge change, as now a player can't just remove all flying zombies on screen. Especially with the increased recharge, it is now a decision which flying zombies need to be removed, adding some more strategy to this fairly simple element of a plant. And, would you know it, this range also allows Hurricane to actually do something beyond this, be an actual plant 
with an actual ability. Hurricane will knock back all zombies in the slain when placed, and chill them all. This makes a plant actually mechanically interesting, unlike Asa and Clover. It's also just a natural progression of the concept of a plant that blows real hard. Oh, and no, Blover can't blow away zombies Hurricane knocks back. They stay grounded. The ability overall is logical, but also ensures that it can, you know, do something. Game design be damned, it'd be pretty helpful. This also ensures that it doesn't lose out on any interactions Blover had, too. Here's an interesting fact. Zombies are in the air, are generally trying to move towards you. Think about it. Prospectors jump to be behind you, raptors and breakdancers push towards you, and zombies that drop in from the sky are trying to be near you. All of these are still going to be counted. Why? Because the biggest count of them doing this is ensure they are moving backwards along the way. Pretty simple, I know, but it's honestly something I find incredibly neat. So yeah, it's being brought up. Sue me. Beyond this though, Hurricane is just straight up a really nice plant. Stalling plants are crucial to PZ2, as they keep the game manic without becoming impossible, keeping the zombies and plants kinetic. This is why knockback is so important, as well as stalls in general. It ensures that the zombies are being held back, but also that they can be stronger as a result. And guess who helps with this? This boy, Hurricane. And yes, under this, Blover actually discourages plants to knock back, as it would result in an instant kill on most things. Hurricane is seriously just a Blover designed of actual thought, I swear. I will say that it is somewhat unfortunate that Hurricane is a Jamian plant. This means that it is sold for gems in the store instead of being unlocked from levels, but honestly, it's not too horrible for it. Especially considering that it could have been a premium, so very few people would have got it. Or a Cedium plant, so it's an absolute nightmare to get. But hey, hypotheticals are hypotheticals. Overall, Hurricane is a well made plant, and I think is what Blover should have been. Frankly, just give Blover the abilities of Hurricane, and I would probably be content, but hey, that's not the most important thing on Earth. So, yeah, Blover sucks. I don't like it, I think it fails to be anything of value, evidently, and I really don't like it. It's probably one of my least favorite plants PvZ has ever designed. And I'm the guy who likes Levitator, so clearly they must have mucked it up somewhere. Oh, well, not all plants are designed to be wonderful. This is a thing to keep in mind with plants, but most plants aren't designed with being brilliantly amazing, awesome, or interesting plants. They aren't designed to be these ground-shaking things. They are really just designed to exist. Some plants like Blover are designed to be simple. Not to change the game plan, but to be an additional box in the ever-expansive seed selection. To be a reward to game, however minor or questionable it may be. There is nothing wrong with this as far as I'm concerned, so I think it's important to keep it in mind. Not all plants have to be masterpieces. But as far as being a masterpiece, Blover's trash. Really bad. It sucks, and if you like it, you are nothing more than a government plot to make people believe dumb stuff. Ha! I win! Anyways, visit Creeps, and have a good one.